WOCA. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala. Twenty-five minutes before eleven o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this Friday morning. We are an interesting species, Robin. Us human beings. There was this. There was a song in the um, the musical Hair. If you can remember that far back, it shows, oh, yeah. shows our age. But there was, there was a song in the, in that musical called. Uh, I think it was titled "What a Piece of Work Is Man." And and man, we are what a piece of work. I, I wanted to uh, tell you a little bit before we introduce our next guest that will lead us into that interview. Um, years ago, I worked at an assisted living facility and I uh, worked there for three years. And part of that facility um, housed, for, for lack of a better word, residents who were suffering from some form of dementia. Um, it was there that I learned that all dementia is not Alzheimer's, uh, but all Alzheimer's, I guess, is dementia. But um, there was a lady there and she would sometimes come up to me and she would say, when is lunch? When is lunch? And I would say, it's at noon. Yeah. Say, okay, thanks. And she'd come back and she'd say, where, where, where are we having lunch? And I'd say, well, it's right down the hall, just, just down that hall. And I'd point. And she oh, okay, thanks. And I am not exaggerating. I mean, maybe 30 seconds later, where's lunch? And I'd say, well, it's right down the hall. Okay. And what time? Noon. I am not making this up. It sounds funny and comical, and in a way it was, but she, the look on her face was just so concerned. I just yeah. don't want to miss lunch. I just don't want, I don't want to miss it. I want to make sure I know where it was, and she would ask me so many times. Well, I knew that she played piano, and we had this beautiful baby grand piano at, at the uh, assisted living facility. And so I invited her to show me something. I said, can you show me something? I got a question about piano. I knew that she'd be interested in, in doing this. Well, let me tell you something. <laughs> and I know you know the story already because it's one of those most fascinating things. And it's why I said we are an amazing species. Um, she sat down and she played brilliantly. I mean, she was like a concert pianist when she was younger. Mm -hmm. And that was, it was unbelievable. People started coming in from different, pl well, who's playing the piano? Who's, I mean, normally you hear people, you know, sit down, yeah, play a couple pretty chords or maybe sing a song, you know, the, the way pop musicians play. Not, mm -hmm. not that there's anything wrong with that, but you know, they kind of bang out a few chords and, oh, you hear them all the time on the radio and it, it's pretty, but it's not like a real trained p piano player no. can do. Anyway, she played it. It was unbelievable. And, and she sat there probably for 40 minutes, 30 or 40 minutes, and then it was lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was just so amazed that whatever was taking away her, her mind wasn't taking away her talent. Um, uh, Margaret Ann Philbrick has written a beautiful book. Yeah. When I first saw it on the list, I thought it was called a minor. Then I realized it was called a minor. Yes. Uh, as in the chord. Uh, Margaret, it says here, is a gardener also, but obviously a, music, a musician. She teaches. Um, let's see. It says here she desires to plant seeds in hearts. I love that. She teaches writing and literature to children and teens at the Greenhouse School and Homeschool University. She serves on the board of the Church of the Resurrection and the Redbud Writers Guild. And her book is one you don't want to miss. It's called... Um, it's called A Minor, not A Minor. It's called A Minor, <laughs> A Novel of Love, Music, and Memory. Margaret, you have written a beautiful book. Good morning, Margaret. Good morning. Where are you? Sorry, Robin. Where Thank are you? you? I live just outside of Chicago. Outside of Chicago. How's the weather? Uh, freezing today and very, I just, just gray. It's, I hope this isn't going to be our fall because it's really gray. So, not the best. So, we're hoping I, to get I'm sure little. yours is good. You probably have great weather, of course. Ours is good, but, you know... <laughs> We get tired of the hot sometimes. Just <laughs> send a little cool. We'll, we'll, I'll, I'll, give you, I'll make you a deal. We'll send you a little bit of heat. You send us a little bit of cool. Will do. <laughs> Where did this story come from? 
From sitting in my son's piano lessons, all three of our children, we have a rule in our house where everyone has to play the piano until they're 18, and it's non-negotiable. And I know that sounds kind of harsh, but it's just something that we wanted our kids to have. And so one of his teachers required the parent to sit in on these lessons, and I thought, oh boy, I wasn't expecting that. So she had us sit in, and we had to take notes and then go over the notes during the week in between the lessons with our son and he is a wonderful really gifted pianist and he went on to indiana university and ended up going to the business school and not majoring in piano much to my heartbreak but the notebook was left behind for me and i started looking at the notebook and really um being told several stories like the one that you told in your introduction and wondering why is this that people are able to keep the music alive inside and express it when they can't really do anything else. And so that question um, just kept plaguing me, and I had this notebook, and I just started interviewing people. And then um, I started researching it myself, reading a lot of books about it. And then I just thought, you know, there's such an interesting story to be told to people that is really scientifically based, but I wanted to put it into a fictionalized context so that, you know, people then can have a story because they remember a story right, better than right. they do a lot of research. So that's kind of how it got started. And, and you know, uh, on, a, on a much lower level than what you're talking about, Robin and I play music. We, oh, I, I guess awesome. you, I guess you call it what we do, folk music. Mm. And and because of my um, work with the assisted living facility, and because here's what I used to say. Let me just share something with you, Margaret. Musicians who like didn't quite make it as musicians, they they sell themselves to assisted living facilities, and then they come and play. <laughs> They, right. they come and play, right. uh, you know, this old man, he played one. And they play, sure, and it, think, yeah. What the heck are they playing that for? Yeah, right. <laughs> so, so we said, you know what we should do? If these people were 17 in the 40s, we should play music from when they were 17. That's right. And so we got these old, old standards. And I'm not trying to say we were great at it, but guess what? The, the songs are great. Maybe our delivery wasn't as great, but still, it stimulated something in them. You, you, we can't play the song. What's that one song that makes the men cry? Uh, uh, Lily Marlene. Lily Marlene. <laughs> and the yeah. men, the men who were World War II vets, they, they, there must have been something going on with that song. Yeah, they yeah. cry. But anyway, it just it just kind of underscores what you're trying to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I've seen it so many times now on video especially. There's a guy out in New York, his name's Dan Cohen, and he started an organization called Music and Memory. And he really got on the map by a video he put on YouTube of a gentleman in very advanced stages of Alzheimer's listening to Cab Calloway on an iPod. And it shows the Oh, I think I video. saw that. Yes, yeah. he just comes alive. He just comes completely he alive. He sure does. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, seeing that, you know, I mean, people just need to know that that's there for them, especially when they have loved ones that are suffering like that. So that's part of the purpose of the book, too, is just to bring that to people and, you know, help them think through what music could really help, you know, my mom or my grandmother, and I can bring it to them. The uh, character Claire, I like how she says that uh, when you play music, you're part of a family. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So true, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, we have a, a little break we have taken about two minutes, but I'm going to ask a question, and if it takes more than that, we'll, then we'll continue it after the break. But you are with the Church of the Resurrection? Yeah. Um, I, I, I want to tell you something, I, when, and I'm not saying, I don't know what I believe as far as near-death experiences, that kind of thing, but I believe there's a God, and I, I believe that we do have an opportunity to live again. But some, some of these people who've come back from these near-death experiences will tell that on the other side, in addition to this light that they saw, they heard this beautiful music, and they describe it as more beautiful than any music we've ever had on Earth. Have you oh, ever? Absolutely, absolutely. There's no doubt about it. I had a friend um, who just told me this summer that a person did a research study on cutting cross sections of trees and then playing them, creating a actual sound recording of those rings. Really? And listening to them, it was the heavenly music. It was the music we can't hear here. And, you know, of course, that taps into what the Bible says, that all creation praises him. And it's going on all the time. And I think that really is the heavenly wow. music. Wow. That, you know, that, that is happening. I mean, we aren't privy to it, but, you know, someone got that brilliant idea to listen to a tree and realize, gosh, there's a lot of music I'm not hearing going on. i got to find out how this is done. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I went to Best Buy the other day, and I saw these fans without blades, and they yeah. were blowing air. 
<laughs> and I yeah. said, how does this happen? Yeah, and now I, I find I, out you can play trees. I'm going yeah. to... <laughs> All right, Ma- okay. Margaret, we need to take a, a little break. You, you, I'm, boy, you just just jumped in. You were so such a great guest already. But we have a whole half other to go after the break, so we'll be right back. Uh, Margaret Ann Philbrick has written the book A Minor. You don't want to pass this mm-hmm. one by. I know we speak to a lot of authors. Don't miss this one. We'll be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. For today, times of clouds and sun with a couple of showers and thunderstorms around high 86 to 90. And partly cloudy tonight, there can still be a shower with thunderstorm near the coast, low 71 to 75. For tomorrow, times of clouds and sun with a shower with thunderstorms spreading from the coast early to farther inland during the afternoon hours, high 87 to 91. For Sunday, clouds and sun with a shower with thunderstorm high again, 87 to 91. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. It's the end of the fiscal year, and that means budget cuts and number crunching. Now's the time of the year you're evaluating your expenses, planning your budget, and finding ways to save money and increase efficiency to maximize profits. Dex Imaging understands and delivers. Call Dex Imaging today for a free document management evaluation. Cutting your office expenses is as easy as calling Dex Imaging. 352-266-0333. Start saving money today and increase your bottom line with Dex Imaging. Printers, copiers, and fax machines that increase office productivity and save you money. No one understands your bottom line better. Call Dex Imaging today, 352-266-0333. Or check them out on the web at DexImaging.com. That's D-E-X-Imaging.com. Or call 352-266-0333 for your free document management evaluation today. Hey, Adam, those burgers going to be done before summer's over? (laughs) Maybe. Why? You got big plans for the summer? Not really. Just the usual kids hanging around the house. How about you? Actually, I'm having Joshua get his pilot's license this summer. What? Is he old enough? Can you really do that in just the summer? Yeah. You can get your pilot's license at 17, and the summer is plenty of time. Plus, this could be the start to his career as an airline pilot. That is a great idea. I bet Tyler would love that. Actually, I would too. You guys should do it. I don't have time for that. Some of us have to work for a living, you know? (laughs) Not you. No. Seriously. They work around your schedule. Really? That's cool. Where are you going? Ocala Aviation at the airport off 60th. How'd you hear about it? I heard about it on the radio, then I stopped in. I've got a card if you want the number. Yeah, hold on. Let me get my phone. Hurry up. The burgers are burning. Okay, I'm ready. Go ahead. 861-7484. Hold on. I missed a number. Ah, such a slacker. Here it is again. 861-7484. Excellent. I'm going to call them now. How about we eat before you start your new adventure? That's probably a good idea. You think? The hottest CD deal this summer is with Florida Credit Union. Our summer CD special includes a short 25-month term combined with 1.51% APY. Take advantage of this high-yield CD special. Offer good till September 30th, 2014. In DeLand, call 386-738-4717. In Ocala, call 352-237-8222. Florida Credit Union, connecting your money to your life. Federally insured by the NCUA. Offer subject to change at any time. $10,000 minimum. All right, 12 minutes before 11 o'clock. What, the, the story of the movie Rocky is interesting as far as the soundtrack to Rocky goes because uh, Sylvester Stallone was looking for a composer to put together a soundtrack for Rocky, and he picked this guy named Bill Conti, and and he and Bill Conti was just a, a starving musician just as Sylvester Stallone was a starving actor. And the two of them uh, hit it rich, I guess you would say, or hit it big anyway, and gave us all a great movie and a great soundtrack. But can you imagine if it had been like like cartoon, not cartoon music, but like um, like circus music? I mean, I, I mean <laughs> music makes such a big difference. I've often thought yeah. that if we could pipe in like circus music at a war, everybody put their rifles down and, and they don't, you, can't, you can't fight with that music, mm-hmm. right? Yes, yeah. true. I don't know. Yeah, there's a great story. Um, it's actually a, it's depicted in a painting of um, during World War II. On Christmas Eve, when you know the Americans were fighting against the Germans, they all um, this is in France. They all decided that my gosh, it's Christmas Eve. You know, let's just lay our weapons down and sing some carols. And so they sang them in their own languages, but they knew them. You know, they did Silent Night, and I think they did Angels We Have Heard on High, and they were singing so that they were close enough to each other that they could actually hear each other. And uh, yeah, for a moment, 
because of that, it was the war did stop right in the midst, you know, of of that heat of the battle. Wow. And uh, yeah, it's just a really it's so a beautiful. So is is writing new for you, or is this not the first? No, thing? I was um, I was a literature major and did a lot of writing when I was in college, and then um, decided to. St- I was in advertising. I did um, marketing and advertising at Leo Burnett. Worked on Kellogg's for a number of years, and then I decided that I want to stay home with my kids for a while, and so I did that. I was a full time mom, and I was writing quite a bit of poetry when my kids were growing up when they were little because it was quick and easy and, you know it just came to me I mean they were just great material you know it was just really fun to do it and then I got my master's and became a teacher and because I was able to work my schedule to be part-time I really started to get much more into writing and I was working on this book and I needed a really a community of writers and that's how I found the Red Bud Writers Guild I heard somebody talking about it in a store and I went home and googled it and I was like wow this guild is like all over the country I got to join this guild and so that got me the accountability to really get into writing much more seriously wow. uh, you you also explore the romantic side of the world and also about the age difference mm-hmm. oh yeah. yeah yeah that's right yeah. that comes from um, my son the one I was talking about in the beginning he's um he, I'm not joking. I mean, I put this in the book. He would take a shower and put on a dress shirt before he would go to his piano lessons. And this is a high school kid who ran cross country and was smelly all the time. <laughs> <laughs> It's the only time, like, you know, we were saying get in the shower, but he actually wanted to. And it was yeah. really because, you know, he thought so much about this teacher. I don't know if he actually had a crush on her, but he really just thought so highly of his piano He did. I can tell you from you know, a male yeah. mind, he did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that clean shirt only goes on when that happens. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. But right. in, a, in yeah. a Clive's mind, though, it goes more than that. Oh, definitely. And that's out of, born out of the fact that, you know, his mom is a workaholic. And my goodness, I mean, he was growing up and, you know, she was working in her at-home office and he was sticking notes under the door, you know, with the hope Gosh. that you pay attention to him. Yes. So when you have that kind of situation at home, you're going to look for it somewhere, you know. To use a musical phrase, you are, are resonating with our listeners. They're calling in. Do you want to take some calls? Sure, I'd be happy to. All right, let me uh, go to the phone. Good morning. Thank you for waiting, by the way. Uh, you're on the air with Margaret Ann Philbrick. Yes. Hi. Uh, this is Dick. Hey, Dick. Good morning, Larry. Hey. Uh, yeah, good morning to your guest. Uh, I happened to just tune in and hear her talking about her kids. Uh, you made the three of them play the piano, mm-hmm. take lessons. Uh, I had three kids. I didn't do that. Uh, I tried a couple of them, but they uh, ended up playing a clarinet and a uh, trombone or something. You know, mm-hmm. in any event... Uh, my career, I didn't start playing the piano until, uh, well, in church, shall we say, until my 20s. Hmm. And then I played on and off in the 80s uh, in church and the 90s. But I was an insurance man. Mm-hmm. And I had my own business and all that. And I moved to Florida 13 years ago, and I played more piano in the last, 10, 12 years than I have in my all the rest of my life. That's great. Uh, as you were saying, going to the assisted living facilities and, uh, you know, entertaining the old folks, uh, playing primarily the old hymns that many of them grew up with. That's right. Which you don't hear that often, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's been a real blessing to me, so I encourage any of your listeners, you know, keep at it. Keep uh, right. encouraging the kids. Yeah. Because it's such a blessing, late, especially late in life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and I, I think the listeners who come to hear a person playing like yourself uh, are obviously blessed as well just by the, the presence of that music, especially familiar music, I think. Yeah. Thank you, Dick. That was sweet. I, I appreciate that call. Um, do, do you know the ACE, A-C-E, that is the, the notes of, uh, of A minor, right? Was that, is that why you called it A minor? Oh, no, the son I've been talking about, that was his favorite key. He absolutely loved the key of A minor. <laughs> and, um, you know, a lot of the music that was written in A minor were some of his favorite pieces. And, you know, he um, also, because Clive is a minor, I mean, Clive is only 17 when the story starts. And he's falling in love with this woman who's in her late 40s, you know, early 50s. And so I just thought it's a fun play on words, you know, to just use it. So I did. Very good. Uh, very cool. All right. And you have another phone call. Good morning. You're on the air. Thank you for calling and waiting. Good morning. Could you give this um, woman's name and the name of her book again? And then I'd like to ask a question. Margaret Ann 
Philbrick, P H I L Brick. Okay, Margaret and Philbrick. The book is called A Minor, and as she just explained, a play on words, a minor, a, a young musician falling for an older woman. Yeah, a cougar. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, a lot. You know, a lot of the things you were mentioning earlier. Um, I just saw my background is speech therapy and music, and I just saw an article that they've definitely found um, a connection when um, the people who are starting to either demonstrate Alzheimer's or dementia, and if you get them to sing show tunes, Mm -hmm. um, it makes so much more of a difference and an improvement actually singing the show tunes than just sitting there or listening and and between. So that's one one area, but the the whole area of vibration and music Mm -hmm. and how, like if you watch a movie without the music, how different it is when they put the soundtrack, you know, the score to it. And um, using music for kids who are very high strung or autistic, and I, I, I've used heart music and relaxing piano, and the change in their behavior is mm-hmm. is just amazing. So the okay. vibrations and oh yeah, in nature when you mentioned the tree, that is amazing. I can't wait to get your book. Oh That's man, so I want to hear that too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I, I just wanted to add to. Um, a lot of people don't realize this, but if you get the ebook, um, which is much cheaper than the print book, the, the music is actually embedded into the book. Oh, cool. So you can touch it when you see that title, like one of the hymns in the book is Great is Thy Faithfulness. And so you touch that, and then that music plays while on your e reader. So that's just a really technologically cool so part nice. of the yeah, book. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Thank you, Lauren. Appreciate, appreciate the call. I'm going to squeeze in one more call. You have resonated with this listenership. Hold on, let me push this button, and uh, there we go. All right, good morning. You're you're on the air with Margaret and Philbrick. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, let me see two things. Uh, when the when the troops uh, sang Christmas carols, that was World War One, not World War Two. Oh shoot! Sorry about that. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, 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 okay, uh, and um, uh, one of the nicer songs in the key of A minor is Jerome Kern's All the Things You Are. Hmm. All right. I have to look that one up. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. Have appreciate, a good morning. Appreciate all. that. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, you are, you know, if you, it sounds like you were writing when you were a young girl and you said something during the break to Robin, like I was eavesdropping. I, I could hear you talking and, and you said something about how children, that's the prime age to learn music. Well, you obviously, oh, yeah. at your prime age, you learned how to write, obviously. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I guess, but um, really, I played the flute. I mean, the flute is my main instrument, and I started doing that when I was in fifth grade, and I still play. Oh, okay. I love it. So, I don't know. I mean, I, was, I, I lived on a river. I was outside a lot, so who knows what I was really doing. I was, like, yeah. floating around, playing and singing and playing the flute outside, and I don't know. I had a very beautiful childhood. I was very, very blessed in that way. Uh, I have a copy of your book, and uh, I would like to give it away. No, I won't. I don't want to give it away. <laughs> That's a lie. No, I will give it away. Uh, okay. Call me if you want the book I have. It's called A Minor, A Novel of Love, Music, and Memory. Margaret Ann Philbrick is who you will need to look up if you don't get the copy I have, because then you have to buy it. Plus, it sounds like the ebook is cool. I'm gonna, yeah. I, I, uh, all right, let me give this one away real quick. Good morning. You've got the book. Who's this? Betty. Betty, you got the book. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, Margaret, uh, do you have a website? Yes, margaretfilbrick.com. Just my name, margaretfilbrick.com. Easy enough. Is any of your other writings for sale on the on the website? Or, yeah, I have another anymore. book. There's, yep, I've got another book that's on there, and then um, I I do blog on there, and I um, sure I'm always you know happy to get in conversation with people who are into reading blogs, and I put my poetry on there. I put articles that I've published on there. So yeah, there's just a variety of different things going on there. And and the first the holiday gift book that you created back to the manger was done with your mom, and you said she's an oil painter. Yes, my mom is a painter. Oh wow. Um, so, yeah, she and I did that book together, which was a lot of fun. And I'll tell you a quick thing. We go to, to retirement homes and present this book. And, you know, as the writer, you think that they're going to want to hear you tell and talk about the story. But, no, they only wanted to hear from my mother, the painter, because she was their age. And, you know, she had created a book. So I realized, gosh, I need to tour more with my mother. She's a much bigger draw. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, r- 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 we have less than a minute. I want to tell you a quick story. 
I told you, Rob and I do music. We at Christmas time we were asked to play at a state park. Then they told us you can only play the the uh, secular Christmas songs, and we said, "Well, never mind." That's right. All right, <laughs> because we wanted to make sure we included the Christian Christmas songs. Sure. But here's a secret: if you play instrumental and they are the religious Christmas songs, the people in the park. They'll sing them. You can't chase those people away. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. That's true. They're always going to be sung. You know, we just got to not worry about it. It's going to happen. Yeah. You know. Mar- Margaret, right. you're a joy. Uh, thank you so much for being on the air. Good luck with the book and come back with, with the next one. All right. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate fun, it. Fun interview. We will take a little break. We'll be right back. Right. This is The Source, WOCA Ocala. We'll be right back. 6.3 FM, The Source. News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. South African Olympian Oscar Pistorius waiting to learn what his sentence will be after being found guilty of culpable homicide in the death of his girlfriend. Pistorius's bail was extended until sentencing is completed next month. Fox Radio's Paul Tilsley in South Africa growing pressure on the NFL commissioner to reveal what and when they knew about the controversy concerning former Raven Ray Rice. New report out seeming to contradict Roger Goodell's claim that Rice was ambiguous. ESPN in this report cites four different sources who say that Ray Rice told Goodell in June at a meeting at the NFL headquarters he had indeed hit his then fiance in the elevator. One of those sources quoted as saying, Ray didn't lie to the commissioner. He made it clear he had hit her. 